Okay, welcome to the July edition of the core team meeting. Hopefully, uh, everybody's having a good summer so far. Uh, so let me advance the slide. Uh, yeah, I don't think there were any new suggestions for the agenda topic that was on the issue, so we'll go over mostly three things. Uh, uh, David's going to give us an update on the advisory council discussion we've had for a while. Uh, and following up from uh, last month's meeting on, on sort of reframing uh, contribute for prize labels or issues. And uh, another discussion that we've had for a while on the Slack workspace, uh, especially for court team members. Um, so. So those are the uh, main topics. And I got a couple of quick ones for GitLab Commit and the next month's meeting or, or upcoming two meetings. Um, but I mean, feel free to add on the slide itself if you have anything else that you want to discuss towards the end. Hi, Lee, how are you? Didn't see you until now. Good morning, yeah, very well yourself. Good, good, thanks. Okay, so. Let me advance the slides, and I guess I'll turn things over to you, David, and uh, can give us a quick update on community advisory council. And um, so as a reminder from last last month's meeting. Uh, sure. All right, go ahead, David. Thanks, Ray. Um, yeah, I've put the link to the uh, to the merge request, uh, which uh, all of you are familiar with. Um, essentially. Um, yeah, what I wanted to say is that um, that I've been considering closing this uh, this MR uh, essentially. Um, well, there's been uh, interest uh, for some, uh, some of the people who acted, them, them being you as well, uh, some of you as well. The initiative has not gained traction. Uh, one thing that I should do, though, uh, first of all, is uh, I should probably apologize for the time it's taken for uh, for getting getting an update on this as the DRI uh, or the person who proposed this. Uh, I should have been uh, more. more more um, more on the ball, essentially, on the, essentially bringing this to a conclusion uh, either way. Um, I think uh, perhaps leading to uh, the thoughts leading to that decision, um, I feel that um, I feel that uh, having another process, uh, having another uh, governance body that uh, adds more um, time commitment to uh, to people who are already offering their uh, their free time as volunteers. Um, might be put uh, might be putting them at uh, stress. Um, um, I think other than that, one thing that I was concerned about uh, personally is uh, is the uh, four point in there, the potentially public exposure that uh, and, and that um, members of this council would uh, would have. We've had some um, controversial discussions uh, in the past, and uh, I'm thinking that we will have uh, more in the future as well. And um, yeah, I mean, for one, I think this might bring unwanted media exposure to uh, to people who would be part of this uh, this body, and then um, for them to try to represent both the, uh, the views of the weather community, also be uh, have a critical eye with GitLab, but also defending uh, defending GitLab's decision in some cases, this could let uh, lead to stressful situations. All in all, I'm thinking that uh, yeah, as I'm saying this uh, on uh, this slide. I think rather than having a body um, that uh, requires regular com time commitment, perhaps defining a process that we can activate um, whenever there is this need for um, having more visibility and uh, getting more, um, um, more proactive feedback on a particular decision that uh, GitLab is uh, trying to take might be uh, might be more um, more effective. Um, I think right after this call and uh, after hearing your thoughts, um, my plan would be to add a uh, comment on that uh, on that MR, essentially um, similar to what all, all of, I've just said here, and then um, close the uh, close the MR. But yeah, any uh, perhaps uh, I'll just turn it off to, over to you. Any uh, thoughts? Any concerns? Any ideas? Um. I think you already contacted some people to join the Community Advisory Council. Probably it's best to inform them, not only we are the comment on in closing the MR, um, but send them a personal message, at least those that you invited already. Good point. Um, and you mentioned that uh, 
there should be a, a process as an alternative to deal with uh, situations where uh, where GitLab uh, makes a controversial decision. Is the process already documented somewhere or do, do we have to create it or? We don't have a, a, a process um, yet documented any uh, anywhere. Um, I mean, the idea is uh, would be essentially, and that's just a proposal, um, by the way. It's uh, I said it's not. There's nothing in the works yet. Um, would be um, to uh, to have a way to mark particular uh, issues or particular MRs um, as requiring um, wider community feedback. And then uh, proactively engage with uh, with community leaders um, to um, to provide their feedback. Um, I mean, in my head, I'm thinking that something like uh, like a label uh, where people can uh, subscribe freely to um, might work, um, but we might still want to reach out reach out to some people proactively. Um, if we were to do this, then uh, we will start an MR and then get the feedback in there. But if anyone has got any thoughts on this or things that make sense, um, by all means, don't block on the, on us from uh, from the GitLab team to to create this. Uh, if you think this is something that might make sense, then feel free to to propose a process as well. And uh, and I would be I would personally be supportive as well. Yeah, I think at least a small process would be good to have. Just something like if there's a controversial discussion, it's this label and uh, be active in the in the discussion uh, because I think that was the last big thing that some people from GitLab simply left one comment and then didn't participate in the discussion anymore, and that increased the outrage. Yeah. So I think it would be good to have at least a short general process for this kind of situation. So people get, have a start to handle this. I think the only risk with what was just proposed there is like, uh, you know, no one's going to want to label an issue as controversial. So like, how do you handle, right. how do you make sure that they don't make a mess? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would, I would choose, I would choose a, a perhaps a more neutral, I mean, this might be just a small thing um, with the naming, but I would just, uh, Use a label called uh, "requires community feedback" or something like that. Perhaps that's uh, because yeah, I think I think uh, I agree with you, Ben. I think uh, explicitly naming it controversial uh, might automatically make it controversial, even if it uh, if it wasn't in the first place. Yeah, I mean, I agree. You would come up with a different name. I still think you run a similar risk of like. Right. I mean, I guess it's kind you know kind of core team can look out for that kind of stuff, but need various folks to not be afraid to ask for community feedback. And I think some people might be just because, you know, it might not agree with what they're trying to do. So it's, I'm not, I don't, yeah. not saying there's a perfect solution. I don't have an alternative just, you know, coming from the other side. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think I think it might require particularly new, uh, some education, particularly new members to to new team members to GitLab to essentially not be afraid of having this discussion uh, of uh, whenever there's something that's potentially going to be controversial. Mm. So, um, so yeah, perhaps to recap the conversation uh, i think one thing that i can do is to as sanas was suggesting contact those uh, those members outside of the uh, core team that uh, we reached out to um, to be part of the initial council uh, to let them know about the decision to gather their feedback as well and then um, following that and depending on that feedback and uh, most probably close the uh, dmr with uh, with a comment uh, and the comment would be uh, what I've just said here, essentially. And then um, I will extend the invitation as well um, to those that we contact um, to see if there's uh, that the, um, they would have feedback on uh, on this um, process for gathering feedback. Um, and uh, and then yeah, we'll probably then start a new MR um, with a more lightweight process.
Yeah, sounds good. Perfect. Thanks a lot for uh, for your feedback. I really uh, appreciate it. And then, and then again, apologies for having this linger uh, for uh, for such a long time. There's some learning I need to do. To, I need to do here as well. Thanks, David. Okay, advance the slide not too quickly. Uh, okay, um, so the next topic, uh, we talked about this briefly uh, last month on uh, contribute for prize. Um, I mean, this label has been around for, I think, a little over a year. Uh, I mean, the purpose was to encourage people to, uh, I mean, not just wait for like the quarterly hackathons, but work on uh, issues that like particularly product managers highlighted to work on like a throughout the year to get a, a, a GitLab merchandise. And I think I mentioned last month, I the only person who actually had an MR merge through this program was actually Jacopo and a couple of others like try to work on something, but it didn't quite work out. Uh, I mean, a few things that, I mean, I've learned, I, I think David, that you mentioned that this is one of the last bullet items. Um, I mean, I think I try to promote it through, uh, I mean, mostly through my tweets, but I might've had like a GitLab social team, uh, at least retweet as well, but it's probably worth, uh, being a little bit more proactive about this. I, for example, do like the quarterly, uh, or schedule the scheduled tweets with, uh, with the list of issues that have these labels, uh, you know, I mean, I have a, a new name that that's that's sort of proposed, but uh, keeping this on on top of everybody's mind uh, on a regular basis may not be a bad thing uh, to highlight some of the issues that we want we want to encourage uh, wider community members to work on. Um, and on that issue itself, I think uh, there were like a two or three names that that uh, that were proposed. Um, but I think what I, what I'm sort of leaning towards is, um, just re renaming that label to I call it like a community challenge. Uh, so don't emphasize the price too much as, uh, this is, um, more of a substantial, like a issue that we, we want to encourage community members to work on, I mean, even like outside of the hackathon. Um, and uh, we also looked at, uh, uh, myself and uh, Samantha, one of the community advocates, we looked at uh, like updating the prize as well. Uh, we're looking at a couple of options. Uh, we, and we can actually customize the prize with the message. Uh, if we go with the community challenge uh, label, uh, we can add a message, um, something along the lines of I, I met this challenge uh, on the merchandise. So that's something that community members can celebrate with. Um, so it's a, you know, slight modification, uh, of, of the label or, or the program that we, that we created a while ago, but that's sort of the, uh, you know, version two that I was thinking of doing, but obviously want to get your feedback and get your thoughts on it. Um, yeah. And then also if you click on this link, I mean, there are about 19, 20 issues with that, with that label. Uh, that uh, you can take a look at uh, to get a sense of type of issues that uh, people added the the label to. Um, but even within GitLab team members, is probably definitely needs a reminder or refresher because um, this, like I said, this hasn't been necessarily active in the past few months, especially. Um, so uh, let me just pause there and see if people have any thoughts or or feedback. I like the uh, the label change. Uh, I think it's uh, it's better not to focus so much on the price than mm -hmm. uh, on the challenge itself, because right. after all, it shouldn't you shouldn't just do it because you get, let's say, a free T-shirt for it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, what. Well, yeah, I mean, you're you're exactly right. I mean, people aren't like motivated to do this. I mean, even if it's a like a hundred or two hundred dollar price, which which would be more than that we typically spend on merchandise. But yeah, I I think people that are motivated to to work on these type of issues, I I doubt that that 
the merchandise is the, the main motivation. It's it's nice way to kind of celebrate it, but um, they're not doing it for like the monetary or material reasons. We we covered last week or last month, I should say. Mm -hmm. What the were there any specific criteria, or was it very much down to the the kind of product manager to say, well, you know, this is something we really want, the community really want, but we haven't got capacity to. Yeah, I mean, I think it, that's, uh, I mean, fair characterization. I, I left it pretty much up to uh, the product managers. Um, and I think like um, maybe it's in the handbook or even the original issue, like for each of the stages, I wanted to like limit the number of them. Like I didn't want to have like a 50 like issues with a label on like a for, for the editor group as an example. I, I mean, I don't think that's ever happened, but uh, I sort of cautioned them to like a limited number of uh, issues with that label, but I didn't, you know, necessarily um, uh, monitor them that closely. But it's, yeah, I mean, I, as long as like the product managers put, put some thought behind it, uh, and then that was important enough, but didn't think there was capacity amongst team members to work on them, that's, that's something they could add labels to. Right, I think that might be a good candidate to document on the handbook as in the criteria um, right. for uh, yeah, for choosing those uh, those issues. Right. Yep. Let me add it to the notes here. Okay, uh, any other thoughts or, or comments? Are these issues limited only to product managers and thus to deliverables and features? Because I can say for the GitLab front end, we will have a good challenge of migrating our code to Vue mm -hmm. 3 and Apollo 3. Mm -hmm. And I believe it would be nice to have some contributions from community. I'm not sure this should fall on the community challenge for price. Mm -hmm. But is this limited to product managers only? Uh, are you asking if is this limited to like you know product managers who can apply labels to issues? I mean, not necessarily. That's how we started. But I mean, you know, um, no. I mean, the, the short answer is now. If if uh, in you know it, consultation amongst engineers or, or with the product managers, if somebody, someone thinks it's appropriate to add that label, um, you know, as long as they're GitLab team members, I think that's completely appropriate. But um, yeah, I mean, I think that's the way it started, but yeah, maybe I should sort of mention that in, in the handbook as well. Um, right, I was gonna ask a similar question of like, mm -hmm. you know, is there a process for people to nominate things? Cause like, I don't have anything on, uh, on mine right now, but there could be core team members that might see things that they think should be considered. You know, what? Mm -hmm. how should they suggest it? Right, yeah. I mean, I would like definitely leave it to each of the, like the, um, not just the product teams, but each of the, like the groups and stages. Uh, Cause I mean, they all, you know, work slightly differently. Uh, so I wanna, uh, 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 respect different styles of work, but yeah, I mean, you know, w whatever consensus they come to, uh, they decide certain issues like worth highlighting. Um, it shouldn't have just have to be product managers. But. Perhaps, uh, perhaps a way, and another way would might be to, I mean, for for core team members specifically, if they see something mm -hmm. that's uh, that's uh, gaining traction, uh, or if there's something that they personally. Uh, feel that it's important um, to um, well, to, uh, to get worked on, um, and uh, and there's no capacity in the um, in the uh, in the stages teams uh, for them to bring it up on a core team meeting, for instance, um, as in a nomination. I know that this is not really async. I mean, there could be an async process, but um, that might be a lightweight way of uh, of doing this, as in nominations on um, on core team meetings. Right. Yeah. I mean, I guess I just, uh, you know, again, I don't have anything specifically now, but like, for example, 
if you just sort the issue tracker by like popularity, for example, like there's a number of popular issues that are not scheduled, like the most popular one, for example, dark theme, you know, it's not scheduled, but like, should it be considered? And there's a bunch of other ones too, so. All right. Uh, I think that's a really good point, and that's kind of what I had in my head. That's one of the ways the question that's come up in Gitter a few times around, well, what should I attack? And I think we all have mm -hmm. slightly different approaches to, to how we pick issues up, but one of mine has certainly been to look at the most popular. Um, but the most popular ones generally, I guess, would have been picked up if they were simple enough. Mm -hmm. So that would be my primary concern that a lot of the popular issues, not necessarily, but quite likely that they're fairly complex beasts. Um, and whilst I guess some of the community members are more than capable of, of tackling them, some of them might be, you know, really require a, a, a team of um, seasoned GitLab experts. Okay. Cool. Yeah, appreciate the feedback, and uh, uh, I'll uh, add all the core team members and in, in the handbook update that I make. And uh, um, yeah, once since we have the labels sort of sorted out, um, I want to get the the prize kind of lined up, and then uh, can definitely work on updating the handbook and uh, uh, make more announcement through our our social team. Okay. All right. So move on to the next fun topic, uh, Slack workspace. Um, and, uh, yeah, Ben and I actually had a chance to catch up during a coffee chat earlier in the day. And, uh, Ben, you, you've sort of been living, uh, lived through this over the past, uh, I mean, almost two years now since you've been a core team member and Lee, you're, you're kind of going through this now. Um, so, um, I think it was almost like almost two years ago. Um, I think we, I, I think, well, like, you know, before I, before like David and I joined GitLab, I think the old Slack policy was, I think the core team members had only access to the development channel. I think that's correct. Like, I mean, Remy, correct me if I'm wrong, or some of the other core team members, I think they only had access to maybe one or two. Uh, Slack channels, and then we opened it up to all Slack channels um, yeah, a few months after David and I joined. Uh, so, so, so everyone got access to all the Slack channels as as long as you're a core team member had NDA sign. And right around the time like Ben joined, like there was some concerns like within GitLab, uh, within IT, and others about. Uh, there are like a certain private channels. Uh, I mean, a lot of the, I mean, core team members, you've seen this, like the ones that start with like a pound A underscore, like account specific channels that uh, people were concerned about. Um, and we were trying to find like a different ways to kind of resolve it. Uh, I think Hannes, like you proposed, like is there a way to sort of isolate those private channels in Slack? Um, and, uh, it turns out there still isn't a, a way to do this. Uh, I mean, we thought maybe if we upgraded our plan to something higher, we upgraded from like a standard to, I think it's called plus. Uh, so that's the isolation of like a private channels is, is still not a possibility. Um, so we're sort of in this like a limbo, like, I mean, several of the core team members have access to all the channels. Um, uh, Ben, you have access to, I, I don't know what the number is, like maybe 15 or 20 or so. And, uh, Lee, you haven't seen it yet. Cause it's a confidential issue. I, uh, I mean, David just approved it a while ago, but we request access, uh, for you to, to like a 10 or 12, to, like a different channels okay, on, thank you. on in GitLab workspace. So, I mean, so it's a start, but. Uh, that's not, uh, I mean, Ben, I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you like voice your concerns, but it's obviously not a, a ideal solution because I mean, Ben, you shared an example, like you started a discussion in one of the channels that you have access to, and then people mentioned another channel that you don't have access to. And it, it obviously it's not a good experience. Um, so we're, we're sort of at a, like a, a 
a state that's not like necessarily ideal. Um, people, even amongst the core team members, you don't have equal access to all the Slack channels. Um, and one of the things that I wanted to have discussion on was about, you know, just like some of the other companies or other open source projects, why don't we also start a, like a completely open uh, workspace that's separate from the current private instance of GitLab. Uh, I mean, that, that's sort of one of the things that I, you know, even amongst the community relations team that we started you know, talking about or thinking about. Uh, so that's sort of where things are. Um, let me just stop there. And Ben, I mean, do you want to share like other concerns that, that we discussed early in the day? Well, I mean, you pretty much yeah. highlight that, but it's like, yeah. you know, I have access to some channels and then I know there's other channels that would be good to get access to or nice to have access to, but then it's like, well, is it worth the effort to ask Ray to request me access and get the approvals? And then like, you know, all various different times people will be like, oh, look at this link. It's like, well, I can only see the preview text of that link. If I click the link, it says, you know, doesn't exist because I don't have access. Mm -hmm. um, like, cause for example, like, you know, I do a lot of stuff with the docs. I mean, you eventually I got access to the docs channels, but originally I was like, well, I can't kind of go looking at the channels that are the topics I'm most interested in. Um, so I think you pretty much highlighted it. Uh, you know, I guess some other thoughts just like, yeah, um, I've seen other companies do public slacks um, or open source projects rather. Um, I think that's a potential option to consider. Um, you know, some potential conflicts there is like, in a way it competes with Gitter, but I'd say it's a lot different. Otherwise, why does GitLab use Slack and not Gitter, you know, since you guys own it? Um, and then the other thing I mentioned to Ray earlier today was just like, a, a third thing to kind of consider could be to like run your own Mattermost server, because I mean, GitLab does ship Mattermost, but no one at GitLab actually uses Mattermost. so maybe that's an area that GitLab's kind of blind on, um, but you do ship it as part of Omnibus. So various different thoughts. I think that was what I was going to say. Is it, are you far, far, far too deep to consider other um, solutions um, that I know I've bounced ideas around with maybe yourself, Ray, and some other um, maybe product team, et cetera. We, since lockdown begun, have started using Discord. Uh, my organization um, we're using the free plan I know there is a load of additional features if you pay um, but I mean the, the requirement seems fairly basic and it's quite surprising that um, slack don't actually facilitate what you're looking for right, well, I, think I mean go, go ahead Ben sorry well I was gonna say just I think something to consider too is like just because we set up another uh, Slack, Discord, Mattermost, whatever it is, I mean, doesn't necessarily mean that like GitLab, the company, has to change how they do things today. Like it'd be beneficial to have a bunch of the engineers in all those places or whatever is chosen. But I'm just referring to your comment of like, are you already too deep in Slack? So it doesn't necessarily yeah. mean the company has to change. It's just like, like for example, I'm not active on Gitter because I find the experience quite not good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's fair. No, I mean, I think that's one of the issue. Uh, I, like not a lot of uh, GitLab team members are on Gitter because of the experience. Uh, I mean, they enable, like, I mean, we have it like, you can at least like create threads now, but even threads is, it's pretty rudimentary. It's not as uh, elegant. Unfortunately, as, yeah. I mean, yeah. my, my thinking is that threads are worse than not yeah. having threads. Um, right. yeah, you can't just, follow a conversation extent. anymore. Right. Um, right. You know, if somebody posts a reply to a message that was is not still on the screen, mm. um, you, you kind of don't really see it. So, um, yeah, I'm fortunate. I, I think as well, whilst I can understand, you know, if we do bring on board yet another product or tool or whatever you want to call it, but I think that's entirely the issue that we've got at the moment. Um, people don't like Gitter. Yeah, the tool's not great. And because there's there's no one, I'm, I'm exaggerating things greatly here, but um, yeah, the, the GitLab team aren't there. So 
people come on and ask questions and, and don't get answers. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's kind of the idea of trying to find something that, you know, I'm sure we've all experienced working in organizations where there's too many tools and too many systems and too many platforms. And um, yeah, I, it, it sounds a bit of a dangerous, a slippery slope to me. Yeah, I mean, I think I think then if we were to use something like Matamors, then it should be the, the tool to use rather than, uh, than Slack, to be honest. But I know that this is an ideal situation or rather an, an aspiration and mm -hmm. there's more complexity to that. I mean, to me, the most important thing would be to remove walls um, because right now, um, I mean, people have access to, uh, to GitLab. You can talk to GitLab uh, over gitlab.com. But, uh, but this real-time, uh, more um, instant messaging type of conversation is something that also creates, um, well, helps the community to, uh, to get that connection with, uh, with the GitLab team members uh, much more than the, than conversations over, over MRs. Um, and I think if we were to have a, um, a separate open Slack instance, we should definitely move um, some of the channels that are inside GitLab to have only um, one version rather than having private and, 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 uh, and public channels. Um, because otherwise, um, the wall would still be there. And um, yeah, even with the recommendation um, for the GitLab team members to work on it only in the public channels, then um, and, yeah, there's, the, there's the risk that conversations are still happening uh, you know, on, the, on the private ones. Yeah, I mean, my sentiment is also that if uh, I mean, let's say, you know, all of a sudden we have this like a public instance, if GitLab team members aren't there, um, especially from the engineering side uh, of GitLab, then we're sort of back to where we are with, with, I mean, you have a nicer interface and nicer tool with Slack, but, you know, you still have that separation. Um, but, um, and um, yeah. But you know, have you know, have asking like a lot of the like a GitLab team members to, um, you know, keep track of both workspaces. Like, I don't know if uh, there'll be a lot of objections or how that's going to go. Um, yeah, and then I think I noted in the issue as well. I I talked to Dawe on on the Miltano team. I mean, they've had a a. a a public uh, instance of uh, Meltano Slack for, 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 I mean, at least like several months. And it's, it's a free version that, I mean, Dawa himself is managing. It's not supported by uh, GitLab IT. Um, so the, I, I um, just, you, you have a lot less bells and whistles on, on the free version. Um, so, um, you, you know, if, if we have a, like a, completely pu public instance with less bells and whistles. I don't know if that's going to cause a lot of issues either, but um, yeah, I mean, Remy, Natalia, I don't know if you two have any like thoughts or, yeah, I think for, for good, good or bad, I think people are just really entrenched into like Slack. This has sort of become a habit for, for a long time and it's hard to break away from. Yeah, what scares me as GitLab team member, if we have two instances, like private and public, and we have duplicated channels there, right. it would be definitely hard to track both. Even with one private instance, sometimes it's very hard to keep up with messages or say front end for right. development. If right. we move it all to public, it could be fine, but we would need to have some kind of moderators to prevent spamming and unrelated questions from the community. And this will happen. The yeah. person who moderates view Discord, I know this for sure. And mm -hmm. we have public and private instances as well. So if we move public, we need to ensure that messages are all related to the topic and not preventing core members and team members from something really important on these channels. Because if they are spammed, nobody will just read them. Right. So this is one of my concerns. And with a public instance also, uh, we would need to make sure that GitLab team members are well aware they're posting in the public space because sometimes in our channels on private Slack, sometimes things happen and sometimes we post something that probably shouldn't be posted on public spaces. 
right. like from simple things like I don't know non-inclusive lexic it still happens and it's on our slack mm -hmm. and this might be a limiting factor for the team members as well because we need to think well before we post yeah. and you probably remember that we had a few incidents already with all our open issues and discussions and this is transparency is one of our values but it also leads to some issues with publicity with hacker run discussions yeah. and reddit discussions so this should be considered for sure right yeah i mean with natalia because if the channels are open it will be too noisy there and there is no guarantee people will not pick the first channel from the list and use it as the the general support channel for example uh, if we have the development channel we uh, there's no guarantee that people won't use it as the just help me how to install GitLab or something like mm -hmm. that. Right. And it will be the problem. I mean, I hear what you're saying, but how's that not a problem with Gitter and the form and so on today? Like, you're changing medium, but I don't think you're changing the problem. I mean, maybe you're right. making the problem easier to create because the tool is easier to use and easier to find, but Yeah, I guess you still see questions about, I mean, I, once in a while, I need to remind people like, you know, go to this Gitter channel for, you know, using GitLab questions versus if you're not contributing. But uh, yeah, I, I wonder if the volume will be larger on Slack uh, of the, those incidences happening. But but I, I do agree with you. Like when I talk to Dawei, like he's managing that by himself. Like, I don't know how many people are subscribing to that Slack channel, but even if it's a free version, I, I don't think it's, it's probably something that like GitLab IT team will dedicate, help, have, to take, have to dedicate resources, not just to like a moderator, but also manage the, the, the workspace. But I mean, yeah, Ray yeah. like has, Again, I'm not really that familiar with Gitter, but I mean, has much work went into trying to figure out the various deficiencies with it that people don't like? I mean, like, for example, I'm poking at it right now, and like, is there really only one channel for all of GitLab? Because no, there, no, there are, th there are three. There's one for contributors, there's heroes, and there's one for just, I mean, I think we called it, like, now is it called GitLab HQ? I can't remember what it's called now, but that's uh yeah so there are three right now but but really just one for users isn't there yeah yeah so yeah i mean i guess just okay i see now just the, the usability is uh, has some room for improvement <laughs> 10 minutes of me clicking around i can't figure it out <laughs> right I've definitely raised this a number of times, not not the usability as such, but I'm still looking for an answer why Gitter is used. Um, and all I've figured out for myself so far is because it's owned by GitLab. Yeah, I mean, so I mean, how, how we started using Gitter, is that, is that what you're asking, Lee, or? I think we can answer this one, actually. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, I can, I can give you my, yeah. my view at, uh, at least. I mean, yeah. when I started, there was that only channel, uh, GitLab. And uh, I'm not sure if by that, yeah, by that time, uh, it had been acquired by, uh, GitHub had been acquired by GitLab. But that channel might have predated the acquisition. I'm not sure. Right. Yes. Um, the, uh, I mean, the reason why we started using it on the community team uh, and the reason why we started creating the other channels was to have a way for community members to have that real-time conversation with community members, particularly on the contributors channel. Then Ray can, I mean, people can talk to Ray, can talk to uh, the um, merge, uh, merge request coaches, can talk to each other, and that's uh, yeah, that's a uh, that's an easy way with uh, with a tool that's already uh, there, that's uh, already hosted uh, for us to have that conversation. And then recently, for the same reasons. John Coughlin and our team um, created the, the Heroes channel for Heroes to be able to have that, uh, that real-time conversation. 
um, that's essentially it. I mean, if we were to use, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a free of cost tool right now. It's, uh, it's um, on, on by GitLab. Um, and then the reason we started using it was because the, yeah, it was uh, readily available. We, we could have considered Mattermost, for instance, but- Gotcha, uh, okay. That would have and Slack was users. maybe ruled out because it w it was assumed that there was a cost associated and you'd have the same permission-y related issues that we're discussing now? Yeah, indeed. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I cannot, ask, I cannot answer the question on why the first uh, channel ever was, uh, was created, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's how we started using the rest or we started creating the rest on the, on the community team. Cool. I, I think the channel was originally created uh, when GitLab was still hosted on GitHub, mm -hmm. and GitHub was just uh, the tool where the community could get a free shed, uh, essentially, uh, for pretty much any GitHub project. So somebody created a channel there, and that's it. OK. I guess yeah. they're still very popular uh, within, yeah. within GitHub. Right. Yeah, those of you who probably contribute to more open source projects may be more aware of um, if that, that tool has a, a kind of reputation. It's, so it's some of the discussion that I, I think I pointed out to Ray a while back that I saw in the GitLab channel. Um, a couple of guys, yeah, basically just saying, you know, why on earth, you know, everyone uses Slack. And I personally had never heard of Gitter before, but then potentially, you know, I'm quite new to open source, so maybe it is a fairly industry standard. Cool. I need to, I need to find out, I think about a year ago, I saw someone posting a blog post on uh, percentage of people. Uh, there was a survey actually, and uh, there was still a high percentage of GitHub um, projects using Gitter because of the of how easy it was to to set up. Essentially, I'm not sure if things have changed uh, since uh, since then, but um, yeah, I'll try to find out and collect cool. the data. Cool. Yeah. So got about a minute left, but thanks for your feedback. I uh, for I mean I should have mentioned this earlier. We plan to uh, have this as one of the topics during the. Uh, group conversation call that uh, community relations team will have next Thursday, I believe. Um, so appreciate the feedback. And if you have any, any more thoughts or feedback, I mean, feel free to leave comments on the issue. Um, we'll uh, keep you up to date on this. Uh, just just one thing to clarify, right? The next yeah. group conversation is not Thursday this week, but the one next week, the 23rd yep. of July. Yep. Cool. Thanks. Uh, all right, so a couple of quick things. Uh, I'll cover the second bullet first because it's quicker. Uh, GitLab commit, it's, if, in, in case you haven't noticed, it's free. Uh, so it's, it's obviously virtual, like I mentioned last, last month. Uh, but please register. It's, it's going to go for two hours. I, I think each session is repeating at least once. So if you miss it in your time zone for whatever reason, you can catch sort of the next, next wave. Uh, so I want to encourage you to register. And for next meeting, I wanted to propose canceling the meeting in August. Uh, I mean, a lot of people will be on holidays, and are typically on holidays in, in August. And also the, uh, the next hackathon is going to be in the first week of September. So, so that's like early in the month. Uh, then typically we have court team meetings. So I just wanted to cancel, go ahead and cancel the meeting next month and uh, resume the call on September 2nd. If, People are okay with that. Um, if you have any like uh, concerns with that, then please let me know. But, uh, cool. All right, so we're uh, actually gone minute over. Uh, thanks for staying later uh, than usual. Uh, thanks for your feedback and discussions, and I'll talk to you or see you online pretty soon. Thanks, Ryan. Have a good day. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. Take care. Bye. -bye. Bye.